bright duty every student matters the next topic of this unit 6 we are going to take that is buddhist education by the end of 6th century before christ the vedic system of education began to degenerate caste system became rigid rituals became rigid elaborate and very expensive also so it was not it was not possible for all other to get the access to these this vedic education vast majority of the people were annoyed by the supremacy of the brahmins because earlier time also in ancient time we have seen the brahmins were the only one those who were having that authority to give education to the children and somewhere they were framing their own supremacy which was creating the problem for the other groups and the system they started following were becoming more rigid and the rituals were also becoming more rigid one and which were very expensive not able to be afforded by all the other group people as a result what happened a new religion that was the buddhism came into existence with the appearance of buddhism a new system of education emerged so after vedic period this buddhism emerged just to provide the teachings to the children the core of buddha teaching if we talk about it contains the three major tenets discipline meditation and wisdom wisdom is if we talk about is the goal and the deep meditation or concentration and is crucial for achieving wisdom means wisdom is the main goal of this buddhism teaching and how does wisdom could be achieved with the help of this meditation or concentration when you are going to keep focus on something buddha declared that earthly desires were the cause of sufferings according to buddha it was declared that if you are involved in, if you are going to involve yourself with all these causes of the earth or the means the causes for your sufferings are your relations on this earth your earthly desires that you are looking for that the materialistic thing for which you are running for are the main cause of your problem to get rid of these earthly desires and to live a life of perfection one has to do the meditation in solitude one has to do the meditation in the solitude of forest so according to buddha it was told that if you really want to get that peace or the perfection in your life only one thing is there for you the meditation and that also solitude of forest means separately you have to do that kind of concentration or meditation here if we talk about you all must be knowing about the story of buddha also who was a prince and he was just one of the saint informed his parent the king and the queen that never let him face the problem never let him face the problem of the surrounding otherwise he won't be living with you he will leave the house and will move away he will leave the palace and will move away once by chance buddha got the chance to move out from the palace where he encountered the different situation where he saw a old men and old men another one was a beggar and so these kind of thing when he encountered he realized that what these kind of sufferings are prevailing in the earth these kind of sufferings are prevailing on the earth because up till now he was not aware about any such suffering because he was a prince so he was having all the facilities all the privileges he was getting and as soon as he got that thing the enlightenment was there and he decided to move out from the palace and just go for the meditation and then here this was the time when the buddhist buddhism was profound or buddhism was started monks and bhikshus used to live in the monasteries or viharas where they got sufficient time to studies and meditate 
the vihara slowly turned into the centers of learning so these places which where the monks were living to get or where they were doing their meditation practices and all slowly and gradually these viharas the places turning into the centers of learning for the admission into buddhist sangha one had to get rid of desire and get free from the royal services one has to leave each and everything behind and then they have to be the part of these institutions or these sangh the one who wants to get part in that want to get admission in that was to shave off his or her hair and beard and to wear yellow robes you might have seen these kind of people that how they were covering themselves with a rope and then shaving off their head they had to salute the feet of the monk and joining his hands had to say i take my refuge in dharma i take my refuge in sangha i take my refuge in buddha so this kind of oath they are taking before getting the admission in these sangh or these buddhist institute dhamnam dhamam sharnam gachami sangam sarnam gachami buddham sarnam gachami so this is the very well known phrase that is the well known teaching related to buddhism this process was known as pabaja and was the initiation ceremony in buddhist system where in uh, vedic we have seen the upanayan was the activity or the ritual performed before moving to the formal education and here in the buddhist teaching this was taken as the part of the buddhist education system similar to upanayan in vedic system of education for this one had to be 8 year old and the education would continue for 10 years so at the age of 8 year they used to enter in that and till 10 year it is going to be continue as the basic education a novice had to follow very strict rules a novice means the one who has taken admission as a or here we can say as a monk or the pupil regarding they have to follow the very strict rules related to food clothes poverty chastity and abstinence from worldly pleasures he had to follow these rules very strictly a novice had to go for begging also his duty was to do all the manual wash in the vihara so they were not considered from which particular class or the group they are belonging to all the things they have to leave behind and all were supposed to be considered as one and they were supposed to do all the activities on their own as they were as this was done in the gurukuls or patshalas also how in gurukuls also they were going for bagging the food and all and then based on that only they were fulfilling their needs he also had to follow the preceptor when the letter went for begging he had to show his reverence to the monk and the monk in the turn would act as his friend philosopher and the guide and whenever they are going for any sort of begging they have to follow his preceptor means the teacher's instructions whatever being given to them and they have to give full respect to the monk they have to show their faith in them because they are going to be act as their friend philosopher as well as the guide when both of them went for begging he had to keep a distance from the guru so that he may not be disturbed the buddhist system was open to all there was no discrimination on any basis for the admission in the buddhist education system caste has no connection to at all in the buddhist system of education as we have seen in the vedic system only the three main classes were having the right to get the education but no such kind of thing was there in this system even preceptors very often were not brahmins here the teachers if we talk about most of the time they were not brahmins buddhist system was well organized in monasteries the places where they used to give the education 
in brahmanical system there was complete detachment from worldly pleasure it was not so in the buddhist system of education buddhist system was democratic here in brahmanical system in the vedic system if we talk about they used to ask you be away from all sort of worldly pleasure but no such kind of thing the strict thing were followed here in buddhist system they gave you or it was a more democratic one the difference between the preceptor and the pupil the teacher and the student if we talk about was in the level of spiritual knowledge means if the one is going to have more knowledge was considered as a teacher if the one who is going to have less knowledge was considered as a pupil in buddhist system spiritual as well as secular subjects were studied from the writing of chinese scholars we can get the knowledge of buddhist system so this system was as we have already discussed that was one of the democratic one so spiritual as well as the secular subjects were the part of their teaching fahian visited and studied at nalanda near patna he wrote about it as the most famous sang one of the pupils from china came here in nalanda and got the education there and he mentioned about this sang according to him the number of residents in nalanda was more than 3000 at the time it had 8 halls and 300 apartments so here he has described the structure of that nalanda that how the things were segregated and how the accommodation was also provided to the pupils there the curriculum if we talk about he mentioned that curriculum had the following subjects the sanskrit grammar metaphysics philosophy and the medicines these all were the main subjects of teaching in buddhist education system the chinese were so astonished to see the arrangements that they gave a very elaborate description of the arrangement because the chinese were very much surprised to know about that astonished means they were surprised to see that kind of arrangement montessori's had two storied buildings and had both single and double rooms for the student there was a stone bench and a shelves for each students for study discovery of large earthen pots from the site of nalanda during the excavation suggests that they had a common meal system also because the mess is a place where all are having their food together so that kind of system was followed there huin sang studied at nalanda for several years and obtained a degree of dharmacharya degree of dharmacharya that is doctor of religion so this degree was taken by him later on buddhist got split into two but after some time what happened the division was taken place the classification took place and that was in due course of time the famous center of education disintegrated the division was there but the principles of their system are still prevalent and can be still seen at buddha vihara so although the division was done but the principles that they were following are still the same and still having the same sort of basic rules and regulation they are following and the teaching they are following still exist in the same manner so this was the buddhist system of education and hopefully you all are able to get the features of the system and easily able to compare it with the previous vedic system of education in india that how both were similar and how both were different from each other